to see if either Dark Falcon or Jonathan or Teapot, these players have been doing so well at these Wi-Fi Xenos, make some waves at the offline Xeno starting next week. Yep. Okay, but here we have to see how this tournament is still still going here. And we'll this is the run back for those of you who didn't see in winners semi as these two faced off. Dark Falcon actually ended up dropping the set. 3-1 teapot just played fantastically. Uh so this time around, you can see that there's a fire in him. He wants to be making that he doesn't want those previous, you know. Failures to encroach on him. It's a fresh slate, and he wants to be taking it this time around. So far, completely even percent between these two. Look at that. Oh, but that's something that, you know, Terry has these burst options that if the uh, if the Belmont player is not careful, he can just zip right through all those projectiles. And oh, he's trapped at the ledge, and he's dead just like that. Oh, man. Terry does have lots of comeback mechanics, so this is not the sort of situation where if you're Dark Falcon, you're like, hey, I can just, like, hang back and, you know, play super defensively and just win. Um, as we're already seeing, 94% onto the Dark Falcon, and given that uh, the Belmonts might be quite heavy, but their, their recovery is pretty bad, so any move that sends them far off stage, they're going to be in serious, serious danger. Okay. <laughs> I really like how Dark Falcon has just completely changed his approach to a matchup like this. He's, he remembered their first set and realized, hey, I was playing just a little bit too item heavy, uh, trying to play like a, a mobile, uh, trying to play like a tank, like Belmont's can be. And instead, he's being a lot more mobile. He's rolling a lot more. He's dashing back a lot more. And he's looking for he's looking for setups when there's only cross on the screen. Because he fe it really feels like that's the only amount of time that he can reliably get. And cross is a pretty good one to be throwing out at a near constant rate. Oh, good job catching that roll. <laughs> Recognizing those defensive panic options. You can start to possibly really punish them. All right, 75 percent 83 now and this is go time here don't look Those... now because it's almost time well, it, was, it was down air time but it might also be buster wolf time uh, sooner rather than oh oh no why uh tactical sd yep he's like i don't <laughs> I, I don't I have know. access to those strong kill moves yeah i don't need my super special hand. moves <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Alright, well he cleans up the stock, so... <laughs> he, doesn't, he really doesn't need them, he just needs his normal special moves. <laughs> Alright, and now here, we're once back into this sort of... Yeah, like, blow-for-blow blow match. Really good job with that side, be just closing the distance. Oh, but getting caught on the holy water doesn't... With great... He smashed the eyes down to the ground, so he's able to shield. The downer doesn't actually hit him. But, okay, this is going to be another one of those tipper forward air. He's having to navigate through this wall of projectiles while still trying to make it back to the stage. Okay, the down B right there, managing to do it. But, oh, 120, and he's off stage. He makes it back, though. This could possibly be a comeback point for him. He does have access to those really strong, powerful moves. Oh, but aware of that, Dark Falcon starting to throw out more of these forward airs. Back airs trying to... Ooh, just stuff him out again, punishing the uh, the power dunk. But 160 percent. Oh, looks at that Buster Wolf almost gets it. But at this point, oh man, 51 percent. He's still trapped at the ledge. Can't S the eye away from that axe, and that's gonna be game one for Dark Falcon. The taunt as well to boot, but that's kind of that's the stuff that uh, Belmont can really do if they if they space their holy water right. Like. It, it looks so hard for a character like Terry to get off the ledge because he will never snap to it, which means the proper spacing and allowing the holy water to ignite but still uh, still drop below the stage, those are going to be extra, extra punishing. And it looks like Dark Falcon has really figured out exactly where to place himself to to hard punish the, uh, the rising tackle, even if he gets the... Uh, uh, the invincibility. Ooh, oh Lordy, that was a that was a strong game one showing from Dark Falcon. Like as I mentioned before, it's like a lot of these dash backs, a lot of jump backs, and really utilizing the 
uh, the whip and all of its range. Back, uh, Belmont backer is like is a heck of a move. And we'll have to see if Teapot can come up with a new plan because <laughs> Dark Falcon looks like he's ready. He's ready to take this set. <sighs> Although admittedly, Teapot did sort of give him a stock for free. Uh, not fair. even sure exactly what happened during that. And we're going to be having game two go, on go, go. Final Destination. We've seen Teapot constantly counterpick to this stage. The way that he's able to ooh, just use that power dunk towards the corner so freely. Yeah, it auto cancels and it just becomes such an oppressive tool that even if you're familiar with it, even if you know the exact frame data and mechanics, it still can be really difficult to punish. Look at that. He's gone. He's done. He's crouching. He's teabagging on him. That's going to be a massive pickup for Teapot. Wow. He's... This is not like that last game in the least. Oh, the aggression that he's actually putting out here. The fact he's able to absolutely shut. It feels like every single thing Dark Falcon is trying to do. Just getting shut down before he can even start. These up-angled, like, back airs trying to stuff out these jumps. And he's like, no, I'm on the ground. It's just avoiding every single one of these aerials. Okay, right there. Finally, that cross is going to be hitting him. But he's done 13% the entire game so far. This is such yes. a baffling turn of events that really makes you consider, like, and you would think, oh, a Belmont player, like, yeah, they're never going to ban FD, but you might have to start banning FD if games just frequently and consistently go like this whenever Teapot's on FD. <laughs> I, I want to remind you, what, do you remember what the last game of their first set looked like? Looked it was like gross. It was on FD, and it was just one of the most brutal, brutal beatdowns I've seen in a long time. And that seems to be Teapot's MO, is like, if you beat me, I'm going to take you to FD, and I'm going to make you sorry for beating me. He, he basically has the counter punch on lock from the stage from the stage selection screen. It's like, all right, like I get a free win as long as you don't ban FD or you don't change something up about how you play on this stage. Because every single time we see Teapot take to the air, it's with a burning knuckle. It's with a a power dunk. It's with something that Dark Falcon just isn't able to mess with. Oh, he's able to just punch the axe. Okay, that time around he doesn't be able to. He, he, he is wearing through. gloves. That's true. Gloves, famously good protectors of knuckles. Yeah, I mean, right. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, no, dude. <laughs> just, have you ever? You can punch through anything if you're wearing gloves, dude. Punch through gun bullets. That's how they, that's how they do it in the. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> literally in does in this game. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm now just I'm now just thinking of the the Terry Bayonetta matchup and wondering like, <laughs> like do bullet arts win? Granted, they are magic guns, so a little bit different. That's true. Well, what about Joker? I feel like he just punches the Joker's guns. Uh, well, jo Joker's bullets aren't projectiles, unfortunately. So. It is true. Somehow, which Somehow. I mean, he can still punch them. <laughs> anyway, either, uh, either way, <laughs> we, we, I mean, I feel like, like, hey, listen, that digression <laughs> was fine to have here because it's yeah. honestly been the same thing that happened since the start of this game, which is that Teapot has just been kind of brutalizing uh, Dark Falcon whenever he counterpicks him into FD. So I think from here on out, probably FD is going to be banned. Also, if, if uh, Teapot is remembering how that first set went, I think we're most likely going to be seeing a ban on uh, on Lilat. But if that's not the case, we're almost assuredly going to be seeing Lilat for Dark Falcon's counterpick. Yeah, I would... I would think so, but it's been... It's so weird how this stage interacts in a matchup like this, because... Like, I, I've mentioned it before, uh, before. Richter Belmont is not a very fast character. He has abysmal air acceleration, the worst air speed in the game, period. But he makes up for that with the amount of range he has, with things like his whip and all of his items. However, the burst movement of Teapot has been so fluent and so aggressively fluent 
that it's hard for Belmont to get anything started, even with the additional airspace and lack of coverage for these items, it doesn't matter because he's a moving hitbox that's coming right for him. They didn't ban Lila. All right, he did not ban Lila. I wonder what stage he used. Even more scared of than this one. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to be seeing it. Let's see if maybe there are some changes that he himself has made to his strategy. But one thing that we saw last time around is the fact that he cannot power dunk quite as freely given the awkward layout of the platforms here. Um, okay, actually, interesting. He's doing a really good job of like sort of doing these power dunks but spacing them, managing to go past the platforms like that. But at the same time, oh... <laughs> Dark Falcon is just ready for it. He's able to, because because of the fact that that means that his angles are more predictable. He's able to throw projectiles out to shut down options much much more effectively. And look at he can space so far away and do the slant. He still connects that holy water right at the ledge. Oh, shielding that Buster Wolf. And at this point, 136 percent. He has to recover to the ledge once more. Gets clipped just bit by bit, and then. That's all I need. That's all he needs is that little bit of extra holy water damage, especially since it, like, on a stage, on a ledge like this, it's gonna start hitting below ledge. Uh, or below the stage, even. Oh, man, this is, look, I, the stage just looks so sharp for uh, for Dark Falcon, though I am surprised he, we don't see a lot of the uh, the upbeat from uh, Dark Falcon. Like, that's a really, really good uh, burst tool, and now I think, uh, teapot may be a little bit <laughs> stubborn. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just, I, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> there it is. It's so good. <laughs> I could see how it's quite risky. And that oh, it feels like the game plan right now. Oh, now he's going for it quite a bit. But yeah, you can see that like the game plan right now is basically to play pretty dang safe. Stay on those top rooms for the projectiles. Stay the fact that his, yeah, the, the, like the fact the stage allows him to just not have to engage with those special moves in the same way has been so massively, massively useful. Look at that, another back air, putting him way off there. He might actually go up two stocks right here. That axe, not enough to kill, but now we're looking at 150% on this Terry, and I think that was an up tilt right there. That was so an up tilt, sir. <laughs> okay. Great anti-air, never really known to kill, but I guess anything kills if it's high enough percent. Oh. Uh. Oh, he was looking for an air dodge. That's why he went for that down air. He was thinking fast fall air dodge. Teapot didn't give it to him, but you're not too stressed if you're Dark Falcon, I guess, about this. Like two stocks to one, 68 already on him. This is this is your game to lose. Well, that's why you have to be scared, remember. I guess that's if it's your game to win, then you don't have to be scared. You just have to be hungry. Anyway, we do have true now. Enough, true enough. Yeah, right now we just have Terry at 128%. He has access to those powerful go moves, the Buster Wolf, the Geyser, but um, he hasn't even gotten Dark Falcon to the point where those moves are going to be that relevant. He's not even going to get the chance. That's just another. Tactical clean edge guard gonna be closing out game three. We now have Dark Falcon only one game away from guaranteeing himself a spot in grand finals. So Teapot, we saw that I, I mean if you remember, he did some amazing stuff on the winner side. And I'm not sure if there's adjustments that may, were made on Dark Falcon's part, or whether it's that, you know, Teapot's maybe not quite in the same headspace he was back then, but it, this is looking like a completely completely different set between two different players. I mean, yeah, look, look at the, the, the sheer dominance. And I, I, man, I also, it's hard to understate how much the stage counter picks matter here. That even if Dark Falcon manages to, uh, or if Teapot rather, manages to take this next game, he still has to worry about winning on Dark Falcon's counter pick stage, which we've seen how powerful counter picks just are between these two. I mean, I feel like a really, really uh, important part of this is uh, Dark Falcon won on Town and City. And it looks like Dark Falcon banned FD, so he has got to win on a stage that Teapot won two games on in their winner side set, but lost game one in this one. And recency is what matters. And this version of Dark Falcon punished Dark Falcon 
seems like he's in a completely different uh, just headspace, while Teapot is, only seems to be getting more and more frustrated as the set goes on. At the same time, I like the fact that he's starting off much, much, much more patiently this time around, especially while the platforms are there. And now that we have the FD variant, he might do more of those final destination strategies we've seen from him. Yeah, those power dunks to add to his mobility. I love that dash attack. That's so hard to beat out the power dunk, but that hitbox on that move just seems to work perfectly. I don't think he has a jump. Okay. He's going to be forced to recover to the ledge. Actually gets hit by the forward air. And all of a sudden, this is... I, can, I just, teapot. can I just go on a tirade of how much I adore uh, Dark Falcon spacing in this game? He's been primed with these back airs to the point where they're even hitting a ledge. He has been spacing out things like Buster Wolf and Burn Knuckle with things like Dash Attack. Like every just thing, everything that Belmont can do seems to be in just the right spot to give Teapot a hard time, and that's cannot be understated. Okay. okay. Ooh, now we have Dark Falcon with that solid, solid lead, and that means that now he is a Belmont with a lead, and we know the kind of shenanigans he can get up to at that point look at this doesn't even want to approach stays on that platform probably waiting okay no he's actually going to be approaching honestly it might be viable to just wait until you go back to the fd variant because the the platform limitations have just been it feels like pretty pretty annoying for him okay maybe instead just wants to buy some time all right, finally intercepting. Nice up B right there, but not really able to get anything beyond that. And he's still taking damage. All right, now that we have the FD variant, we're going to probably see the strategy change. We've come alive a little bit, but no, he's still trying to be quite patient, but also mixing up with these burst options, the side Bs in order to close the gap, but now throwing out a lot more long-lasting hitboxes. It's going to be harder for Teapot to actually lose the distance. Just jab it out of the way. Okay, 122% right now. This could be it. Even with that kind of questionable DI, he's going to be surviving. That one probably is going to do it, though. Yep. Yeah. But, and honestly, only 53% dealt onto a uh, teapot. Like, as far as, you know, having to make a comeback go, you know, that... that it was very, very patient. It was very, very slow. But in the end, it seems to have done what he needed to. Oh, but now he's back into that same horrifying situation at 106% and Dark Falcon is at zero. He's at zero too now as this is a clean total stock difference between these two now. And back into this uh, tripod layout, which is exactly the one that is the best for Dark Falcon so far. He's just been able to, to dominate on off of this top platform thanks to the awkward angle Holy Water will send at and hide under this middle plat so that the uh, the power dunk, the true input power dunk, just isn't a factor. It just, it just lands right on the platform and Dark Falcon is free to anti-air. Yeah, if you're a teapot, genuinely, honestly, I think that the idea you, you had the first time on that top platform waiting to go back to the FD variant, there's three minutes on the clock, you're not going to get timed out. And in the process of trying to engage with him, he took all of this percent. He's now at 113, trying to do a good job playing evasively, but not able to actually get any big hits of his own in. Okay, hey, all of these projectiles putting the pressure on his shield. Does have access to those go moves, uh, you know, the, the geyser and the buster wolf, but he's not going to get a chance to do any of them. That forward tilt just has so much solid. And with him trapped in the corner, there's nowhere for him to go, but right into the blast zone. That's going to be Dark Falcon taking the set 3-1. Uh, a mirror image of their winner's set that these two had. Yeah, and I mean, it was kind of what we uh, it had implied with the stage uh, stage selection process being a huge factor in, in uh, the matchup between these two players. And once Dark Falcon looked like he finally banned FD, removing uh, Teapot's strongest counterpick, Town and City were a whole lot more neutral and a whole lot stronger of a, a whole lot stronger in that in the loser yeah. set. I mean, honestly, I think a big part of it is also is that 
Dark Falcon started winning on Town and City. He wasn't able to do that in the first set, and as soon as he started to figure out how to do it in set two, all of a sudden now it's like, oh man, this really comes down to counter picks. And even then, you know, just starts to amp banning FD, and that was it. Felt like from that point on, Dark Falcon just had the game plan that functioned, worked, and ended up carrying him all the way to the victory. Yeah, it didn't certainly helped in a Dark Falcon's case that just what he was doing seemed to be irking and pushing all the right buttons uh, in Teapot's uh, mentality, just com completely corrupting what looked like a firm stand.